All right. You read the thumbnail or you saw the title, so you know exactly what I'm talking about today. And I want to talk about business credit. Business credit is one of the most highly thing you can do for your business. And a lot of people doesn't take an advan- does not take advantage of it. And I really don't know why they don't take advantage of it because business credit can open up doors of opportunity that your business could not even realize. You can dream about it, you can think about it, but it opened up so many doors of opportunity when you're able to leverage business credit. What business credit is, it's, um, it's credit for the business. It is credit for the business. Just like you as a person have a personal credit profile, the business has a credit profile. You have a credit score, the business have a credit score. The better that business credit score is, the more credit it's able to obtain, just as you. The higher your credit score is, the more money and things you're able to obtain. But there is a fine line between the two. In business, it is its own separate entity. And I'm not telling you things that you already don't know or you can't research on the internet for yourself when you're doing your due diligence. But having a business can be very profitable if you leverage it the right way. And you know how they say OPM uses other people's money, except there's no exception to the rule. That is exactly what it is, using other people's money. You're using the banks, you're using credit cards, you're using creditors like suppliers and things of of that nature. You're using their money, their resources. And in business, that's how the process works. It's just a big circle. Let's say you're a beauty salon. I'm going to just use that as an example. No offense to any beauty salons out there. But if you need products in your store or your salon for your business to grow. Most of the time you spend that money out of your pocket or your profits or anything that you earn from your clients and you go purchase them. In business credit, there is a supplier that you get your products and services, your products from, right? Let's say you went to that your supplier and you were able to obtain a lot of service and they grant you say $50,000. What do you think you could do with $50,000 worth of credit with that supplier? You're pretty much able to buy anything you want, bring it back to your shop, your salon, sell it for a profit, pay back and continue business. And that's a cycle repeating over and over and over. Here's an example. I'm just using myself. I'm a videographer. Uh, so I need camera equipment. I need audio, I need camera, I need lighting, tripods, things of that nature. I need that type, is that type of equipment to sustain my business in what I do. So um, my supplier was Amazon. That's my supplier. That's where I get all my equipment from. Love them. So um, as a business owner, I opened up a lot of credit with Amazon. First line they gave me was $7,500. With that money, I was able to get more camera equipment, more tripods, more lightings, more mics, the things that I needed. I went out in the field. I did my jobs, I got paid for those, came back, paid my supplier back over time. Ended up getting an increase in my line of credit from $7,500 to $25,000. Big jump. So with that big jump, think about what I was able to do with that. I was able to obtain more and more equipment to get my own studio. And that's what I did. And it's the same process over and over and over. If I needed more things as a business owner, now that I have lines of credit established, I've become trustworthy, showing that I can pay back on time. Creditors trust me. One creditor trusts me, so they say, hey, if they can trust you, we'll trust you. Go out and get a, um, a business credit card. $30,000 business credit card and go do whatever I needed to do. And I took that. I took the line of credit for there, bought my first car, put it on Turo under the business name, not even in my name, under the business name. Got my first car, turned that into cash, bought my first car, put it on two row, made profits, repeat the cycle over and over, end up getting another car, repeat the cycle over and over. Business credit opened up those type of opportunities. And with that, never on my personal credit, never asked for my social. Some businesses do. I'll be very transparent with you. When starting out, they will ask for your social because they want to make sure that you're, if you can't, if the business can't pay back, are you able to pay back? But over time, as you start developing these relationships with creditors, and the way you develop that is through your business credit profile. And we're going to talk about that as well. You establish those 
relationships, then they won't have to ask you for your social and your and all your personal information because your business credit profile will be so strong enough that it can stand on its own. And that's what I want to show you in this course right here. Now, I normally charge $497 just for the information. That's for the information because I give you the information. It's you that's going to have to go out there and do the work. I'm going to tell you the steps, the process, the moves you need to make to be successful. But you have to put in the work to do it. That's where 7 out of 10 people quit. They will not implement the processes and the steps needed, the action needed to be done to get to where they want to go. Because just be honest, some people are just lazy. They want the information, but they don't do anything with it. And if you're that type of person that you're going to obtain the information, you're not going to, be, you're not going to do anything with it, then you're, up, you're just wasting your time. Go ahead and share this video to someone that can use it that will implement the information. Now, um, uh, before we get into I need you guys to go ahead and like, subscribe, share this, get notifications. This helps the, the algorithm in YouTube. So if you could go ahead and like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate it. That helps me out. I think it's more than fair that I'm giving you this information just for you to like, share, and subscribe because I'll be putting more video out, videos out like this here that's going to help you build your business, grow it, sustain it, and everything else. So um, I put together, I think it's 18 steps that's going to help you grow. It's, it's the steps that you need to take to get your business up and running. Now, if you have a business and you're already implementing business credit, it may be something in here that you can use. And if you don't at all, everything in here you can use, okay? Um, I'm going to talk about um, websites, addresses, phone numbers, incorporating social media, the search engines, logos, the bank account, the directory listing. That is one of the things that a lot of people miss is the directory listing. We'll talk about the website, the EIN, the DUNS number, very important, your domain, your websites, and the business codes, like your SAIC and your NAICS. Big key that a lot of people miss. It tells creditors who you are and what you do. Those codes there. I'm going to even give you an overview of the whole process. And that's what the first thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to give you an overview. So I'm going to just do a real nice sketch so you can see exactly what it is. Then I'm going to come back and we're going to break down each step in order on how you should proceed when you're building your business credit. Now, on social media, you see a lot of folks out there, and there are a lot that teaches you, teaches you how to build business credit. And their information is great. It is really good. But the, step, the, the key component that's missing, they don't give you the in-depth steps. They may say, go create an LLC. Okay. You as a novice entrepreneur, you say, okay, what do I need to do to create an LLC? Well, I'm going to give you the exact steps on creating your LLC. And in the order that it should be done. When they tell you to create an LLC, but they're missing some key components there like what is the address is going to be what is the phone number is going to be what is the name of the business going to be because if you just go jot that down at your secretary of state and then say you're a renter of course you're renting your home or your apartment or something and you're starting a business there and you decide to move now your business is still listed under the previous address that you had so i want you to be real careful about going to create your LLC because there's some things that you got to keep in mind. You got to be a strategic thinker and marketer as well because say if you decide to move, now you're getting to another address and you tell this other credit, creditor like this is my address. They're going to look at you like you're not stable. So we don't trust you because your business in a suitcase and that means you can get up and leave anytime you want and you don't want creditors thinking that way. You want to know that your business is sustainable it's in a location that they can find you. And how do they find you? It's through the search engines. So if they're looking for your business, let me see these five and six different addresses. And they're going to look at you not as if you have different businesses, because they're going to look at the length of those businesses and what's behind it. And that comes from your social media, your search engines, your website, your Google profile, all of those things. They all play key factors in the business address. So I'm going to talk about those as well. So um, like, and, and another thing, 
building business credit is just not for specific businesses. It is good for all businesses. Now, some businesses are high risk than others, and I'll talk about that as well, like which ones are high risk, which ones are low risk, and which ones are the certain ones you want to go into. And then also about the business name. What type of name are you naming your business? Are you going to name it after you, or is it going to be something else, or is it going to be specific to the job that you're doing or the niche that you're in? And I'm going to talk about that as well further along. And then, um, let's see, logo. Logo plays a big part because of the colors, the colors of the logo and how you brand yourself. That is very key. So if you're catering to, uh, let's see, let's say you're catering to doctors and you have bright colors in your logo. So it's not, it's not something that doc doctors deal with bright colors too, but the color scheme is very important. I can't even think of one off the top of my head. But color scheme is very important in your business. The designs of your logo. What does it say? And also you as the entrepreneur. How do you present yourself? Do you have a profile picture or do you have an image as a profile picture? Those type of things are key factors. And if I'm talking about it, you think these creditors are not looking at it. When you fill out applications and you're doing it over the phone, you really don't think that there's somebody sitting behind that computer on a second screen doing a Google search of your business. And if you cannot be found, they don't want to work with you. If your business can't be found, they don't want to work with you. They're actually sitting behind a computer doing Google Earth maps or whatever the case is. They're doing their due diligence. They're looking and being Google, Yahoo. And if your business is not showing up, then I can't trust you. That's how they're looking at you. So if you're not in the search engines, that's one particular thing there. The EIN. There are certain ways of going at the EIN, although it only takes five minutes, but there's certain information that you need to make sure that's listed. And that goes back to your address, your phone number, and your um, email. So you want to make sure those are all incorporated together. Now, you building this foundation. You cannot break away from any of the steps that I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to tell you what to do. You can't break away from it because you will be damaging the foundation. And building a house on a damaged foundation is a sure cause for it to fall and crumble at some point. It may start to shake, maybe a couple of years down the line, but it will, and it will fall. Your credit lines will start being diminished. They will, they will stop working with you. They won't increase your credit lines, or whatever the case is. They'll start pulling back from you. And when that happens, there's something in your profile that is labeling you as a high risk business. It could be the fact that your bank account doesn't have, they say you want to have at least $10,000 in there. It's not a big indicator, but I'll show you how to keep the $10,000 in there and how that helps your business because you do have a business banking credit score as well. So you definitely want to understand that. Um, and just other things there. So I, like I said, I charge $4.97 for this, but I want to give it to you for free because I am a believer that there should be no reason to hold information. You got those, you got percentage of people, 90% of people will take a course, they'll read a book, and they will not implement it. And that's why there is so much knowledge in books and courses because you're not going to go there to get it. So what people do is they charge you for it because if I give it to you for free, you have nothing to lose. But I'm okay with that because it's not me that's losing. I'm going to gain. I'm going to gain either way you put it, either through the algorithm or the search engine. Somebody need this information. I talked to plenty of entrepreneurs that are looking for this information. And I just said, why not? I'll just give it to them and let them have at it. And then when they understand the power of business credit, they'll come back wanting that information. And if I give it to you once and you come back and you want it again, now I have the opportunity to charge for it. So... I just want to give the information away. And um, business credit, I can't say, a, I can say a whole bunch about it, but that's not the part that you're looking forward to. The part is, go ahead, give me the steps. Tell me what I need to do so I can get my pen and pad out. I can write these steps down. I can write everything that I need to do down and go implement it. And that's the way you should approach this. You got to approach it as an open mindset. I know you got a lot of friends and you probably got in Facebook groups or you're, you're searching YouTube and all. And like I said, all of that is fine. But the only difference is I'm giving you the real life experience 
straight. I'm giving it to you straight. I'm giving you every single step that you need to grow a business, build a business, and implement it. And again, it doesn't matter which business that you're in. I can take a person off the street, a homeless person off the street. They implement these steps. I promise you, they'll end up making more money in three to six months than you would have done the whole entire year because they were willing to understand, take the information, implement it, apply it, and they got the outcome out of it. So it doesn't matter which business. doesn't matter. Um, you say you, some people say, oh, I want to open up an Airbnb. I want to buy real estate. Well, through business credit, you can do that. You can do it. There's a process. There are steps to, of doing it. Absolutely. You want to buy, you want to have financing for vehicles. Maybe you want to start a Tiro, a Tiro fleet, put your car on hire car or something like that. You want to purchase vehicles. That can be done doing business credit. And here's the good thing about getting business credit. Let's take two people. Let's take, I'll use myself as an example. Let's say I want a business line of credit. I go to the site, I go fill out a credit application under my personal, my name, my social, my address, and all that stuff. I fill it out. I get approved for $5,000, right? I go to that same site, hit the business part of it, same information, but this time I'm putting in my business name, my EIN, and all my business-related information and end up getting $50,000. That's because business credit is that powerful. They will lend you more money on the business side than they will on your personal side. So I use business credit for everything. If, I'm, if I go to the store or something and I see there's a business application, I'd rather really get the business application before the personal application. Now, let me, let me do say this. Just because you're able to get business credit doesn't mean you should apply for everything that you see. Because if you're going to apply for it, the implied task is that you're going to use it. So don't just be going to get business lines of credit and you don't plan on using it. So that's just one caveat I do want to say. Some of the best business credit out there and the easiest you can get is um, gas cars, fuel cars. Everybody needs fuel, especially with the prices right now. Fuel cars are the easiest to get, but you're not going to get one if your foundation is not built in order and sustainable. And then after that, like, Amazon and other things there. I'm just naming a few. If you're not in the right position as far as your foundation, you will not get that. So like I said, any business that you're in, these steps does apply. So um, let's jump right into the first video. And after that, we'll come back, we'll talk about it and we'll keep going. All right. Be right back. Marketing consultant. Expert strategist. Business growth and producer. How to build a business, how to build a business and be the bank and be the bank. So, um, what I want to show you is how to build a business and be the bank, right? First thing you want to do is get your business entity, right? Well, that's uh, LLC or S Corp or C Corp or whatever, file that with the Secretary of State. You don't have to get anybody to pay for it. They're going to charge you, say, $99 to whatever the state filing fees when you can do it for yourself for the state filing fee, for the state filing fee alone. Then once you get all that done, you definitely, you definitely want to make sure you got the right foundation. You want to have the right foundation, right? The right foundation is the correct name, let's say the correct name, address, phone, the phone number, the email, and all that stuff. And once you get all that together. Now, what a lot of people go wrong in building their LLC is they name it after something, after say something, right? Meaning like... XYZ real estate or investment or whatever the case is, the name is, and that's absolutely wrong, right? What you should do is name your business something very generic, very generic to whatever it is. Like real estate and investments are high risk, right? There are they are high risk businesses. And for what you want to become the bank, you want to keep your risk level low. Think about Walmart. 
think about Walmart, right? See, Walmart is generic. If you didn't know what Walmart was or what they do, you'd be like, what is Walmart? See, Walmart owns real estate. They own investments. They own other properties. They own businesses, etc. So you want to kind of follow that same model. So if I had to name a business, it would be something very, very generic. Meaning like something like um, Leaf Inc. I don't know. I'm just making up something. Leaf Inc. And that keeps your risk level low because you can actually own all this stuff here without being a high risk business. So you get you get your name and everything. You definitely want to make sure the, the foundation and everything is correct. Want to make sure that's correct. Now, as you build this here, this is your business, right? This is your we call it the corporate umbrella. The corporate umbrella. This is your corporate umbrella. Under that umbrella, you can own many of these other things here. You can own real estate. You can own investments. You can own other businesses, which is something that you definitely want to go after. And you can own all kind of stuff. But where the corporate umbrella comes into play, this is how you leverage. I spelled that wrong. This is how you leverage the business. So under those, you can have different divisions we call these divisions right here under the corporate umbrella. So under that division, under the corporate umbrella, you got a division for real estate. You got a division for investments. You got a division for other businesses. You got a, a division for whatever you want to be. And under those divisions, you can have different entities under it as well. So you got Leaf Inc., which is, I'm using Leaf Inc. as an example. Leaf Inc. can be Leaf Inc., doing business as so-and-so real estate, so-and-so investment, so-and-so whatever. And using this example as a Leaf, Leaf Inc. as the example, you can build um, another division under it. You want, you got to have your, you want to have your um, printing company. You need a, a printing division. You might have a marketing division. You may have a I don't know, human resources division. And then the, the, the big part of all of this is, is you're actually building business credit to it, business credit. And this is how you become the bank. Because when you start bid, building business credit, everything that you establish with building business credit goes to the corporation the actual corporation itself of Link Inc. This is where all the money comes in. And once you get all the money here, you can actually start lending it out to these businesses that you build. No matter what business that you build, say you get a, a $50,000, you know, a $50,000 line of credit for something. You can take that $50,000 under Leaf Inc., purchase real estate, that real estate can go out and do its thing, bring the money back to Leaf Inc. And you duplicate the process over and over and over. So once that money comes back to Leaf Inc., you can go back and ask for a larger line of credit because they are paying off this bill. You lend them this money. They're paying this bill off. This money comes back. You go back and get more money from your creditor or whoever it is that you're using to build up. And you just keep reduplicating the process over and over. All right. That's just a quick example. And if you want. All right. That was just a quick overview of what to come. I know that could be a little overwhelming for what you was looking at, but that process does work. And it's followed every day by a lot of successful entrepreneurs and business owners. It started way back. I can't even think of how long ago it started, but. It's the same process over and over and over. And one thing I want you to take away from it is remember that businesses are fueled off of projections. Personal credit is fueled off what you actually make. They can actually look at your income by what you make. And business is fueled off your projections on what you could be making or what your potential to make throughout a year. So, that's one big difference between business credit and personal credit. Business is dealt off projections and business and personal is dealt off 
what you actually make from your job or your other source of income that you have. So, um, like I said, it, that was just an overview of what to come. A lot of people give you that particular information. Now, what I want to do is take everything that you just saw and break it down into actionable steps that you have to implement to get the outcome that you're looking for. The end goal is to be a successful entrepreneur using business credit to fuel your business. But in order to get to that income, we got to take the journey. And the journey that I'm about to give you is all the actionable steps. Once you get through the journey, the destination is obtaining multiple lines of business credit. So you can go out there in the out here in the space, in the world, and that's your job market, your niche, whatever it is, and actually apply for these lines of credit, get approved, conduct business, grow your business, and create different multiple streams of income. Now, with me saying multiple streams of, streams of income, the best way to go about having multiple streams of income is focus on that one stream and let it run rivers to the other sources of income. Stay focused on the mainstream that you work, you're working in right now. Whatever the job market is, whatever the niche that you're in, stay in that niche. Don't be jumping from this place to that place trying to get income from others. Stay where you are. I mean, stay right there and let it tell you. Your business will tell you when it's time to branch off to something else. Focus on that one pipeline, and I guarantee you, if you focus on, focus on that one stream that you're in right now, it will deviate. It will create little rivers on the side that you can do. And just to make it real simple for you, bring it home for you, I started out in the business of videography. Videography led me into marketing. Marketing also from the videography, it led me into marketing. From there, it led me into production. Then it led me into content creation. But I focused on just video. And video opened up different avenues for me. It led me into marketing. It led me into content creation. It led me into producing. It led me into writing. It led me into uh, script writing. It led me into different things. And that's the same thing that your business is going to do for you. So um, let's jump into it. I'm going to break them down for you. And hopefully you got your pen and paper ready to go ahead and take notes and implement this information I'm about to give you. And one more thing. Go ahead and like, subscribe. And uh, share this video for me. I really appreciate it. It helps the algorithm, okay? So um, let's do it. I'll see you on the other side, all right? Hey, welcome to the course. Um, I just wanted to say uh, welcome to the course. And I'm glad that you're here because this is going to be a very comprehensive course here on how to build business credit the right way. Building it the right way. A lot of... Um, there's not a lot of courses out there, or if any that I can think of, that's going to teach you how to build business credit and the foundation to get where you want to be. See, a lot of us use our own money, our own capital, and hurt our credit by using credit cards, our own social security number, and things of that nature. And every time you use that, it pulls money from you personally. When you're using your personal credit cards to finance your business, that's pulling down your credit score. When you're taking money out of your savings, you're losing money from the household. So building business credit is very important and it's very useful to you because those things you don't have to do. What's better than going to a vendor? Say, uh, let's use Amazon for an example. Let's say we go to Amazon and they give us a $10,000 credit limit. And you didn't even have to use your own social security number. You didn't have to use any of your credit cards or any of your debit cards or any money in your account. And they just give you a line of credit. And it does not report to your personal credit for the utilization that you use. It's all on the business side. And pretty much on the business side, the more you use, the better it is, the more they give you. So in this course, I'm going to give you the foundation. I'm going to be your primary instructor. And I'm going to walk you through each step in order on how to build business credit so it would be more advantageous to you. And some of the things we're going to talk about, and in no particular order too, we're going to, we're going to talk about setting up social media accounts, getting yourself in Google and Bing, about your logo, about your banking account, getting in 411, 
getting a website, getting your employee identification number, even incorporating. And the basic things that a lot of businesses don't do, getting the right email, the right phone number, and having the correct address, which is very, very crucial in building business credit, even to the point of building your logo so it stands out, and the color schemes that you use. So, like I said, in no particular order, if you look down the course, I have it put in order. Each one builds to the next. So when I start talking about the business name, it's important because it's going to build onto the business address. And from the business address to the email to the phone number, then incorporate, then get your EIN, then go to Dun and Bradstreet. So those type of things that I'm going to talk about. So I just want to say welcome to the course. Now, I, I don't, I can't tell you what your outcome is going to be because it's going to be on the actions that you take. I'm going to give you the groundwork. I'm going to give you the rules. I'm going to give you the foundation and everything. But all I can do is give it to you. It's up to you to take advantage on the actions that you take. So if you just consume the, the uh, information and don't do nothing, of course you're not going to get anything out of it. So you got to be an action taker. And the way I designed the course is very actionable steps. We're going to talk about one particular thing and one particular thing only, and we're going to leave it alone, and then you're going to go take the action on it. Once you complete that, then you come back, take the next uh, vi video tutorial, and go from there. So building a business credit is very, very advantageous to you, and it can open up your business and explode because you need funding to grow your business. No matter what you're in, you need that type of funding, even if you're in a nonprofit. You still need some type of funding to do the things that you do. And that's even for profit businesses as well. Of course it is for profit businesses. So um, like I said, welcome to the course. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you decided to take it. And I'm going to take you on the journey. And this information, you can find it out there. But what you're not going to get is the experience and, I'm a, and the way I'm going to tell you how to do it and talk to you about how each step of the process works. There's a lot of reading material you can find online, but do your due diligence. If there's something that I say that kind of keeps you, you know, kind of wonder, that opens up another question for you, go ahead and send me an email. Um, hit, uh, hit me up on email or send me a DM. Go to my Facebook page or some kind of way. There's some way you can get in touch with me, but uh, please do. And if the things that I say you still not you're sure about, ask somebody else and see what they're thinking, and I guarantee you'll be right back in here taking this course again because you're going to definitely understand what I'm telling you is truth. It's truth and it's factual. And I've been doing this a long time. I've taken businesses from zero to over $200,000, thousand, three hundred, five hundred, ten hundred, $10,000 and up, and I've done it myself, and it works for me. The best thing I can tell you is just going to open doors. It's even to the fact that you can buy cars in your business name for transportation purposes. You don't even have to put your social security on it. Matter of fact, you won't have to put your social security number on anything. But the truth is, in the beginning, you will get there. You will have to at some point. And so I'm going to tell you about it because a lot of people will tell you, oh, you don't have to use your social security for nothing. But an instance, this, especially when you're starting here, you do have to have that type of leverage. But we're going to talk about that as well. So again, welcome to the course. I'm glad you're here. If you got any questions or information, leave them in the comments. I do check them. It's automatically pinged back to me at any time a um, question comment or concern comes up. So um, enough of the talking. Let's jump right into the course. All right, welcome to the course. Let's start off with the business name. The business name is very crucial to the business because this is the name that the world is going to see that you're going to carry on forever. That's why the name is so important. I highly, highly, highly recommend naming your business something very, very generic. Something that does not have anything to do with the type of business that you are doing. For example, if you're running a cleaning company, you don't want to name your business so-and-so cleaning company because now you're limited to only doing cleaning. But if you keep it generic, something like... Um, Leaf, I'm just using Leaf because I've used that example before. Leaf Inc., if I'm just talking about Leaf and somebody asks me, like, what is that? Well, it's generic. It provides business services. I have a just 
you have your cleaning company, you might have your marketing company, you might have your car company, your rental company, whatever it is. Because now that generic name is the corporate umbrella and it keeps the business generic to what you're doing and you're able to expand it in different areas and do different things. Now, um, I say keep it generic because it's, it just helps you grow further into business. And I want you to think long term. You're not just going to be stuck in one thing. At some point during your business venture, you want to grow and do other things. So keeping it generic really helps. That's your corporate umbrella. And then you could just put divisions and different um, doing businesses as DBAs. I'm doing Leaf Inc. is doing business as a cleaning company. Leaf Inc. Leaf Inc. does business as a towing company. Leaf Inc. does business as um, a moving company. And these are just, just examples. So keeping it generic really, really makes sense in the business. Now, um, another thing about the business name, because it's generic, nobody really does what it is. It's the branding and the marketing that's going to solidify what the business does. Look at um, an example. Look at Nike. Before Nike was well known for sneakers and whatever the case they, they do, they, they marketed it very well. They sold their products. And now when you think of Nike, you think of sneakers. And not only just sneakers, you think of other things Nike can do as well. Adidas, um, Target. All those names are very generic to what they do. But I guarantee you they have different businesses that they do on the side. Target probably own real estate. Nike probably own real estate. Um... Adidas, they probably own real estate, but the name stays the same. It's just that's the corporate umbrella. So I want to put you in that mindset of keeping the corporate umbrella generic, but you can also do different things under it. So that's why it's so important. Now, when you're coming up with a name, you're going to spend majority of your time thinking about a name for what you want to name the business, keeping it generic. Now, the best way to do it is just you just got to pay attention. Just tune in to your surroundings. You may be watching a TV series or a show or something, and somebody says something that captures you, captures that for you. you can, that could become your business name. Or if you're just doing a Google search, you think, of, you think you have a great name, do a Google search, and somebody else has it. Or it's similar to what somebody else is doing. So you don't want to compete in that nature of battling for the name. But, again, your business makes the name. You don't. Your business makes the name you don't because because if you market it well, advertise it well, put it out in the world, it will solidify what the business does is doing. Um, back to the Nike, just do it. They slogan that so well. Now they know Nike when they, when somebody says just do it, the first thing comes to your mind is is Nike. So um, those are the type of things um, when you're naming the business. Now go to the Secretary of State, do his name search, see if somebody has it now. It's so many names, I'm sure you can come up with something very, very generic. So just to wrap this up really quick, keep the business name very generic and then form doing business as as. So if you're doing Leaf Inc. and you're a cleaning company, Leaf Inc. is doing business as XYZ Cleaning Company. Leaf Inc. is doing business as so-and-so moving company. And like, again, like I said again, that is just an example of what the possibilities are when growing a business. And it also helps maximize the um, potential growth and when you're building your business credit. Because if Link Inc. has everything set up and you're, you're getting business credit, because now you have this other business under you, you can actually leverage Link Inc. to actually give the other business more capital to grow because everything is coming into the corporate umbrella. You lend it out to the doing business as they go out and do the business. The um, consumer or customer or whatever pays that company. You pay, you give the money back to your corporate umbrella to pay their bill. And you can just keep leveraging that over and over and over. So when you're growing your business, the business name is very important. It's going to help the business grow. But I tell you, keep it very generic. Now, if you're just on the other side of that and you just want to do that one business and that's it, then that's fine. Name the business of what it, or what it is that you're doing. All right? So that's just a quick one. And that was for the business name. Peace. Talk to you on the next one. I need you guys to support the channel. I need you guys to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And hit that notification button so you can stay up to date on the new videos that I'm going to be putting out. So go ahead and support me, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that um, notification bell so you can be updated on 
all the new videos that's coming out. And I, I appreciate, I honestly, I appreciate your support. Peace. Now, let's get into the video. All right, welcome back to the course. In this particular segment, I want to talk about the business address and just the business address at this point here and why the business address is so important. Now, in the business address, I want, to, I want you to think about where you, at, where you are at now and where you're going to be later. And by me saying that, I'm saying like, so if you're renting an apartment or a home or something and you want to determine that to be your business address, think about when the lease is up. Are you planning on moving or are you planning on staying where you are? Because if you're renting, you got to think long term. So if you're going to be moving in a year or so and go into a new address, now you got to do all this information over again. And on the other side of that, if you have a home and you're not moving anytime soon, same thing for renting as well, then it's okay to use your business, your, um, your home address as your business address. So before you start to register or even put down what your business address is, I want you to think of that first. Am I going to be staying here or am I going to be moving sometime soon? So if you are, then I highly, highly recommend that you get in a virtual address. Now, what a virtual address is, it's a, it's a zone address for a business. It's already there. Um, it's zoned, it's Googleable and everything. A virtual address is good. Now, this is for home addresses too, if you own your home and you're not moving anytime. But I will tell you, if you're looking for a business address or you get, when you're getting your business address, do not get like a UPS or a mailbox, et cetera, or um, using a PO box. Highly, highly discourage and it will red flag your business because those type of addresses p.o box ups and everything tells a lender that you can easily pick up and move that's one and you're not searchable that's two those are very those are two key points that you definitely want to keep in mind so do not do not get a p.o box ups mailbox etc anything like that now what i would recommend is and i don't get no Thing out of this it's called opus virtual mailboxes they're very good opus o-p-u-s and i'll put the link somewhere in here for you to go to that now what opus does it will eliminate a lot of the steps in the process it gives you a business address it gives you a business phone number it gives you a business um virtual assistant some that someone that would answer your phone for you it gives you an um oh it will actually forward your mail to you or it's your emails or, you know, all that stuff that a virtual assistant does. And the good thing about Opus is they report to the Business Credit Bureau done in Bradstreet each month as a year, as if you are paying rent. So um, I'll put the link in there. You can go look it up for yourself and take a look at it. I, I highly, highly recommend it. Very good. Also, um, on a business address, they, um, many people tell you to use iPostal if you're looking it up. iPostal. iPostal was good back then, but it's not now. A lot of those iPostal addresses are being flagged, uh, red flag, and that's causing a lot of uh, businesses, businesses that are trying to develop business credit. Their address is getting flagged be just because of iPostal. So they're not as good as they're used to. Now, if you want to use them for temporary status, that you can until you figure them out. But for, um, and they're very inexpensive as well. Maybe a, a few dollars a month, like $10, $15 a month. You can look them up. I'll put the link as well. But they would be my second choice versus my first. My first would be Opus. Now, you can also Google mailbox forwarding, you know, business mailboxes, uh, business addresses for, mail, uh, for your uh, business. You can Google them too. And you'll find some. But what I want you to be particularly, particularly careful about when you do Google these addresses and you come across one that offers the services that you want and you decide to go with, I want you to take that address and put it inside of Google. Put it in Google and look at the pictures of the building. I've seen it too many times where you put the business address in, you do a map search and it comes up and it's something like a, a mailbox inside of a grocery store or a UPS or someone's home. Those are highly red flag. They get you red flag instantly. So be smart about it when you're picking the address. Now, if it comes up and it's an industrial business or a building that you can look at, someone can look at it and say, oh, there are multiple businesses inside this building. That might be a good one for you. 
highly recommend it as well. So the business address is very important, very, very important. So if you're going to, if you're renting right now and you plan on moving sometime soon in the next year or so, then you may want to look at a um, virtual address. If you're a homeowner and you don't plan on moving and this is your home, then running a, a business out the home is fine. You can use your personal address. Some people like to keep their home and their business a little bit separate, and I can understand that. So for both situations, you can use a virtual business address. I do recommend Opus Virtual, O-P-U-S, and I'll put the link in here, Opus, and they are very, very good for that. And it kind of skips a lot of the uh, steps for you, like the business address, the phone number, and the, um, I think the email too. But I'm not sure. But just go to um, go to Opus, look at that. But they do charge ninety nine dollars. But I mean, if you're gonna business, you're gonna be in this game. You gotta pay to play. That's just how it is. You gotta pay to play. But that is the one that I do recommend. So think about that before you're determining what your business address is. So I'll see you on the next video. All right, welcome back to another one. All right, let's talk about in this one here. I'm talking about the business email address. This is a uh, very important one too. Not a long video, real simple. Do not use Google, uh, I mean, Gmail, Yahoo, MSN, you know, AOL, those type of things. Those are not business email. Those are personal email. Now, if you're going to play in this here game, you want to be taken serious as a business owner. And every business that you come across now, big, they always have their business name at at mybusiness.com or whatever the case is. And you want to be the same way. So if you're using a Gmail or Yahoo or one of those free services, definitely, definitely get away from that. Now, you can forward your business email to those email accounts and you can reply from those as well. So that's okay too, but you can do that. Now, make sure you get an email. I recommend three email addresses. One for my info, info at yourbusinessname.com support at yourbusinessname.com, and then your name at yourbusinessname.com, whatever that is. So for if, you're, if your um, business is, I'm just, um, let's make up something, XY Inc. Um, so it's info at XY Inc., support at XY Inc., Jonathan at XY Inc., you know, so make sure you have those three emails. Why are they good? Because support is exactly what it is. It's support. So if somebody needs some help from you or something, they can always send an email to support. Information is exactly what it is. It's for information. And of course, your personal name if they're sending it directly to you. So those are very, those are three inf um, emails that you should have. And then when you start to build your um, business credit, they're going to ask for your business email address. And those are the three that you can use. Now, when you're filling out the applications, getting for your business, I always put information at. Some websites don't, um, applications don't take it, So, but you got three to choose from. I would use my name at the business as a personal, you know, a reference there. So when you're doing your email address, stay away from the free ones. Only use the free ones when you're forwarding your business email to the personal so you can watch, you can see it there and then you can always set it up to reply back to whomever wrote you but it'll be coming from your business email so that's my quick advice for you for today so get your business email you see all these people doing business they're doing great things and then as soon as it's time to contact them they spent all this money and you're going to do the same thing you're going to spend all this money to set up your business and for the extra three to five to ten dollars you don't have a personal email address. All right, so see you on the next one. All right, we're back with another one. Let's talk about the business phone number on this one here. Now, the business phone number is very, very important. Recommend having at least two. Two is a local and a long distance one. Now, if you watched the previous video when I was talking about um, Opus and getting your business address, Opus does provide a local number for you and an 800 number and a fax number as well so if you went that route you can go ahead and skip through this because you got it now for those that don't have a business phone and i know a lot of people don't want to use two phones which is okay i don't use two phones but what you can do if you have an iphone i'm not sure about the android but I, i'm pretty sure they do too you can go into your app store and look for a uh, a second phone number something like sideline or text free or something and 
you can get a new phone number just for business and start passing that number out. And when it rings or a text come in, it'll come to your personal phone. So you're really only carrying around one phone if you're using it. And then we'll talk about how to register it and everything else in another video. But get two vid get two two phone numbers, a local and a long distance. And if you can get a fax number as well. But previously, like I said, if you did Opus, those are already taken care of for you. So go to your app store and look for um, a different phone number. It's very inexpensive, something like um, maybe 99 cents a month. Or you can sign up for a pro plan for like $12 for the year or something like that. Um, so business phone number. And another thing, do not, do not use your cell phone as your business. Now, you can have these calls forwarded to your cell phone so you can answer them there. And that's fine if you want to do that. But again, if you're using Opus, this part is already taken because taken care of because Opus will actually answer your phone, forward it to you by the press of a button. And when your phone rings, they'll answer it and they'll forward it over. It's called IVR. They'll forward it over and you can answer it in your business name. Now, when you're answering your phone, it's very, very important. You don't just say hello um, or something like that, like you normally answer the phone. Make sure, so you know those two degrees of separation that you're able to answer your phone in a business professional manner. Okay, so get that phone number. And I'll see you in the next video. All right, we're back with another one. So for this one here, I'm going to talk about incorporating, um, putting the ink down, uh, incorporating. So when you start to incorporate, you do not have to go pay all these other businesses to do it for you, like LegalZoom and Ink File or all those. You can do this yourself. Go to the secretary of your state. So go to your Google or, and type in secretary of state for your state. And just click on um, business entities and start to fill out the paperwork. It's very, very simple. And it's going to be less expensive than, for you to do it than hire somebody else to do it yourself when you can do this yourself. Um, each state does have a different filing fee. So no two, I won't say no two states are the same, but each state does have a different filing fee. Um, another, if, they, if you go hire somebody else, they're going to charge you the state filing fee because you can't get around it and the fee that they charge. That's how it becomes more expensive. So you're going to go to the secretary of your state, click on um, business entity entities and begin. And the information it's going to ask for is the information that we just went over. The business address, the phone number, the email, your name, the business name. Those things you already have filed. Um, you already checked off and you have those at this point you should be building your book of all your information so you can put this in it and then when you go to you have that information um also you can watch one of the other videos i may post up here later as a bonus about filing um but yeah just go through there go to the secretary of your state fill it out it's very simple pay whatever the filing fee is and in about i say three to four days they'll send you back your auto articles and corporation your um, state, it, your business in good standing because you just filed it. So, of course, it's going to be in, in good standing. And then um, your articles and everything because you're going to need your articles when you get down to take to the, when you get ready to go open up your business account. But we're going to talk about that in another video. So go to the secretary of your state, click on business entities or business formation or whatever it is that, that naming it and start filling that information out. And now you are you have your business set up and if you got if you already have that then we'll just move on to the next video so you got some steps that you can do and i'm putting these this video these videos in order because the order is very important when you're building business credit okay so i'll see you in the next video all right peace all right welcome back to the course hey in this episode on this here video right here i want to talk about getting your EIN number. That's your, that's your identification number for your business. It's equivalent to a social security number like you. You got a social security number, the business has a social security number and it's called the EIN, Employee Identification Number. Now, like I said, this is gonna be a very short one. All you have to do is go to the, sec um, go to the IRS website, irs.gov website, and I'll put the link on the bottom here. You'll go there and um, you fill it out. It takes you, no kidding, every bit of 10, 15 minutes, if that. Now, everything leading up to this point here, you're going to need the business name. You need the business phone number, the business email, the business address, you know, those type of things. You're going to need those because we're setting up the business. And 
you got to that's the information you're going to need so you know like when you go fill out a, a credit application or anything the first thing they, they ask you for the the date your date of birth which is the day the business was formed and it's going to ask you for just like on you what's your social security number but they're asking you for your EIN in this particular case so you got a social the business has a social it's called the EIN you got a date of birth the business has a date of birth as well that's the date the business was formed so you go to that website you'll fill it out now you will need your social security number in the beginning because it does have to identify identify that you are a real person and you're not trying to you know pull something over on the IRS it's the IRS for sakes now um the thing about it is a lot of people will charge you $75 to $100 to do this, and it only takes you less than five minutes. And I'm no, no kidding, less than five minutes to get this done. Now, once you go through there and do it, it doesn't cost you anything. But people do profit off that. You know, 5% of what someone else know, they're going to profit off of what 95% of other people don't know. And that's how they make money. But I'm here to save you that $75, $100, or whatever they charge you, because you can do this. Now, when you're going through there to fill that information out, it is very, very, very important. Hear me out. Very important. After you fill out everything, you hit submit, and it populates that um, EIN number for you. It's going to come in a PDF format. Do not click off that website until you actually save that PDF. Whether you save it, print it, I recommend doing them both saving it and printing it because once you click off that website that paper is gone and you will not be able to retain it um, it is such a hassle to go back to get that again so before you click off that website and honestly it only takes you five minutes print that PDF or save it or do I recommend doing them both printing and saving because you will need that copy and you'll put that in your binder so you'll have it I highly recommend if you got um, smartphones to save a copy of your PDF and your iBooks on your iPhone. And for you Androids, um, I'm not sure how it works there. But make sure you capture that, okay? Because once you click off, it is gone. But again, I'll put the website under here. It's irs.gov. But I'll put the direct website where you go directly to it, start filling it out. And get your EIN number. You're going to need that. So until then, I'll talk to you on the next video. All right, we're back at it. Welcome back to another one. On this one here, I'm going to talk about building that website. You got to have some type of internet presence. So we're going to talk about the website. Now, this is very, very time consuming trying to get a website together, but I'm going to make it a little bit less painful for you. All you need is one page. That's all you need. You just need an internet presence out there on the web. And you do that by having a website. It's just a one page. You can call it a landing page or something. But you need a website. It don't have to be anything spectacular or looking good. If it doesn't look good, that's fine. Because you can always go back and improve it. But you got to have a website or some sort. Now, if this becomes a big task for you, that's okay. Contact me. I'll put my email in here. And um, I'll get a website built for you very inexpensive I can build them I'll build a website for you or something but you got to have that internet presence you need to have it and while you're getting a website um, if you can go ahead and secure your doing your domain name and what your domain name is the address for the website basically what's the address now if you're going to a site they're gonna give you a domain name as well so just capture that you can always get that domain name save it Purchase a real domain name and have everything forwarded to it in that case. But we're going to talk about domains when we get to that portion in the, um, in the series here. But you got to have an internet presence. Um, if you don't get one, worst case scenario I can tell you is use your Facebook business page. If you have not built a Facebook business page, use that as your um, website or landing page until you get one. But not for long term. Not for long term. Because when you get ready to do your... Um, Start filling out for your DUNS number. We'll get to that as well. It's going to ask you for a website, and you need to have a website, some type of website, if it's nothing but a landing page. But we'll get to that point uh, later on in the series as well. But get a website. If you can't get one, reach out to me. I'll help you establish a website. Okay? So website is very important. It just shows that you have an Internet presence. And nowadays, the Internet is everything. If you want to be searched or want to be found, the first place people go is to the internet and they start looking you up. But 
in the building business credit process, it is a crucial step. It is a step that you must have that you cannot skip, okay? So that's really quick on building a business website. doesn't cost you much or anything at all. If you can go to, they have free sites like Wix or something, um, or you can go to Vistaprint. I mean, there's plenty of places. All you have to do is Google a website. But if you really, really want something spectacular and you want everything done where you can come back later on and build it, just reach out to me and I'll help you get that as well. Okay? Peace. All right, all right. Welcome back to another one. Um, we're moving right along. Hey, if you're still with me, I, I commend you for staying on the path, keeping the journey. So on this one here, I want to talk about those codes that's very important that a lot of people don't talk about. It's the SIC and the NAICS. The SIC, the Standard Industry Code, and the National uh, some code. I forgot what, what it stands for. But anyway, it's very crucial to when you're building business credit. All the code does is tell people what you do. It tells the credit bureaus exactly what it is, is that you do. I'm going to put the link down here. So um, you'll go to that site, you type in your business or you look for your business of what you're doing. It's going to show two codes. One is going to be the NAICS and one is going to be the SIC. You need to capture those codes, write them down. So when you get them ready to do your Dun & Bradstreet bill, we're going to get to that again later. It's going to ask you what is your SIC? And what is your NAICS? And you want to make sure you have that available and handy. Also, the banks ask for the same thing, too, because they want to identify without you having to tell them. They can just look up the code and it tells them exactly what it is you can do. Now, on the flip side of that, you don't have to have just one. You can have as many as you need to that identifies your business and what you're doing. And again, a lot of people skip this step. And when they go into the banks and everything, they get stuck. And when it says, what, it, what is it that your business do? I don't want you to write it out and tell me. Just give me the code for what it is. I can go look it up and read it for myself. So you need to have those codes available. I'll put the website here. Then you can go get those codes. Like I said, that's a really short video, but it's a step that a lot of people miss. And a lot of people skip over this here. Don't be that person. Get your NAICS and your SIC code. It's the codes that identifies the business of what you're doing. All right? So we'll talk again on the next video. Thanks. All right, we're back. On this video right here, it's going to be a little bit longer, a little bit more in detail. I want to talk about applying for your DUNS number. Applying for your DUNS number. This is the step that everyone needs to get. This is where your business, process, your business building credit process actually began. Now, previous videos that we watched, uh, we did earlier, if you don't have any of that information ready, do not apply for your DUNS number. We talk about the business name, the email, the address, the phone number, the website, the SIC, the NAICS, the EIN, everything. You need to have those ready and available. And by now, again, you should have a book or a binder or somewhere where you are capturing this information on a spreadsheet. If you're doing it on a computer, on a spreadsheet where you can copy to paste this information in, it just makes it so much easier and your phone number and everything else. So go on to the website Dun & Bradstreet and I'll put the link there, Dun & Bradstreet. I'll put their link there. Now, a DUNS number is equivalent to, it's like a social security number as well. When, but for credit, for credit purposes. So when they say, what's your DUNS number? You don't have to remember it off, off um, by heart or anything. Nobody hardly ever does. But if you do, that's great for you. What is your DUNS number? They go look up your business and it tells everything about the business that's there. The name, when it was formed, the address, the industry that they're in, um, all type of stuff. Now, when you're doing that, one of the questions is going to ask you, how many employees do you have? Now, a lot of people say, well, it's just me. I'm building my business, or maybe I got two or three people. Now, I want you to think about this here. Everybody that you work with is considered as an employee. If you got a service from them, that's an employee. If you can not give them money or you can fire them at some point or not do business with them, that's still an employee. So um, say you was going out and you was getting your website made. If you pay that person, they're an employee of yours. If you hire somebody to um, do this whole thing for you, that's an employee of, your, of yours. Your kids can be considered your employees. All your family is considered your employee and your employees. 
So if you're paying them in some kind of way, or even if it's not in a monetary value, but you're paying them at some point, um, future, that's still an employee. So with that being said, think in that terms. So when you were at, um, you're, being, you're buying your products, goods, and service, those are employees of yours as well, because you're purchasing something and they're providing that to you. That's an employee. You, you got to pay them for something. You're paying them. That's an employee. So without going too much into that, now, when on the application, it's going to say, how many employees do you have? Definitely highly recommend you having 11 to 20 employees. That's the numbers. 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, whatever. So um, you do the numbers. How many employees do you think you have? I always say 11 to 20. 11 to 20 is good. Now, when you're thinking of this here, you're thinking potential. Business credit is built off potential, not what you're actually earning. It's built off the potential that you can earn. 11 to, 11 to 20 employees is your potential, right? Now, if you go into 21 to 30, that's your potential that you plan on having in the future. It's going to ask you about a salary. How much are you making? 11 to 20 employees makes about um, bringing a profit about $240,000, $250,000. Great number to put on the application because it's a projection. It's a projection of what 11 to 20 employees can make for your business. So always put... Um, $240,000, $250,000 on there, and um, that's really a good number. Now, also remembering, you don't want to put 1 to 10 employees and you're, only make, and you're making $500,000. That's uh, Okay, I get it. If you, if you are, I mean, they're putting down some work. But 11 to 20 employees making the business is making about two hundred twenty to $250,000 is really, really good. All right, so we're getting through that. You got all that information. That's the biggest one there when you're doing your Dun & Bradstreet, when you're filling out that application. Now, it is a free score. It is free. It takes about 30 days. But once you fill it out and you submit everything, you will get a phone call from Dun & Bradstreet in about, I'm going to say, three to five days. If that, sometimes it could be the next day. Now, their job is they're in business to sell. That's, I mean, they're a sell. They're selling. They're selling a service. Now, they're going to offer you all kind of products. One is like $500 a month or up front or something. And they tell you that, hey, we'll get your number to you within the next three days or so. Sounds really good. Perfect. But you really don't need the service. Now, the key point of this is do not tell them, no, you're not interested because all they're going to do is put you on the back burner and make you wait your whole 30 days. Just tell them that you are interested. But since I'm a new business, I do want to talk it over with, um, you know, with some of my other colleagues or employees and everything, because it's a group effort that we're building this business. But the important thing is do not tell them no. Tell them everything else but no. Give them every other excuse but no. All right? Because, if, like I said, if you tell them no, they're just going to put you on the back burner. Not saying that you won't get your number. It's just going to take a little bit longer than it would have if you would have said yes. So you just tell them no. Great product. I love it. I want it. But now is just not the right time. How about you guys give me a call back in about two to three weeks, and then we can uh, work with that. Now, by you saying that, you're not telling them no. You love their service. They will go ahead and push your application up front, and you'll have your um, done in Bradstreet, say, in about seven to ten days. You'll have that DUNS number. Now, that means your credit file is set up, everything. The information that you entered, it's all set. But you're not going to have a credit score. It's going to be at zero. You're not going to have a credit score, but that's okay. The importance of this is getting the DUNS number, getting the account set up, um, taking the free, it's a free credit monitoring service. It's free because you're going to create your um, username and password so you can monitor that. Now, when you're doing it and once you get it back and you go back and you have to alter something in there or fix some, comp some type of information, it will only let you do it once per update. So if you say, oh, I need to update my... Um, phone number on my account. Once you do it, you're not going to be able to go back into it for a couple of days until that actually that actual update occurs. So when you put this information in, make sure it's in there correctly the first time, okay? So you want to make sure that's done. And so getting your done in Bradstreet number, you're on your way. Once you get in that, once you get that number, go ahead and do a dance because now it's time to start building that business credit. And in the next couple of videos below, that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, so far you build the foundation and now you got a solid foundation for building business credit. You got the number, 
Now it's time to start adding credit lines, but before you can get to those business account and credit lines, there are a few more steps that has to be accomplished. And this is for potential people that's going to lend you money or extend credit to you. And we're going to get into those next videos coming up shortly. So go ahead and get that done. Once you get it done, come on back and watch the rest of the videos, okay? So um, until then, I'll talk to you on the next one, all right? All right, we're back with another one. Let's talk about getting listed in 411. 411. 411 is very, very crucial. Um, most creditors will do a 411 search and they will look for you. And if your business is not listed in the 411 directory, then honestly, if I can't find you, then you don't exist. Basically, is what it's saying in so many words. So you want to make sure you get your business listed in the 411 directory. So in the 411 directory, the business must be listed with its phone number, the phone number of the business with the exact legal name of the business. Very crucial. And the best way you can do that is just go to this website, listyourself.net. So go to the website called listyourself.net. It's a free directory. Just input your business information and then wait a couple of days so it can start to start to push out and get your business listed. Also go to super pages as well. List your business name there. Very, very key factor. A lot of businesses do not list their business in the 411 directories. Also, you can list your phone number. When you get your business listed, go back and dial, not using your cell phone, but another number, or you can try to use that as well. And then dial your area code at 555-1212. Ask for your business, and it will send you automatic text back. And if your business, if it does that, your business is listed good. But um, wait for a couple of days before you do that. But I'll put the information in the link somewhere below so you'll have that. But... Getting your business listed in the 411 directory. Now, another way you can do it, you can go to Fiverr and look for um, listings. And then there are people out there that will list your business for very, very inexpensive. They'll list your business over 200 to 500 directories. And then when somebody looks for you, you're all over the place. So 411, go to listyourself.net, get your business listed. I'll put the phone number in the bottom so you can use that to call your, call your business and make sure it's listed, okay? 411. I'll talk to you on the next video. All right, back with it. Um, let's talk about, and this one here is getting your business banking account. It's the business banking account. Another very crucial item. Really, the business doesn't start until the day it really has a bank account that's open. So you go to your whatever bank that you use. Now, if you can use Navy Federal, that is a very good bank to get into. Uh, they're lending their lending opportunities and power is pretty stronger than anyone else. But if you look this up on the web, everyone will tell you that if you can get the Navy Federal, that is opportunity. If you don't have access to getting the Navy Federal because they're military related, reach out to someone that you know that has an account. They'll give you their access code and that's all you need to get into Navy Federal. And people are actually selling access codes just to get into Navy Federal. Um, the lending power is good, but you don't have to go there. If I had to recommend some, Navy Federal, of course, is my first choice. Uh, Navy Federal, Penn Federal, any of those, any credit union is really good. Um, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, that's some of the other banks, and any kind of credit, federal credit union is really good as well. And, um, oh, some of them, they say the, the day that you actually filed your paperwork is not really that important. What is really important is the date that you started your banking account because that's the day you actually started doing business. So um, as soon as you get everything done, don't delay in opening your business banking account. I don't care if you even start with five to $50 or whatever the case, but get it open, get some activity to it. And then from there, you wanna get a debit card from them, get your business debit card. And then all your business transactions from here on out, you should be using that business banking account because it's very crucial to business credit to see transactions coming in and transactions going out. So if you're working your regular nine to five, you want to try to make some deposits. You want to try to make, um, not just going to the teller, drop some of those two, going to the teller, put uh, money in it. Also, if you're using your personal account to transfer money, we want to see transactions that you're actually conducting business. Okay. 
So that's another really short one. The business banking account is very important. And I'm putting these videos in order because the order that I'm telling you is the order that you need to go in, okay? So get the business banking account set up. All right, back at it. Another really quick, quick, simple video, and we're talking about the logo here. Now, a logo for the business is also important because without you saying one word, your logo will determine what the business does, even down to the color scheme and to what the business is doing and everything. But if you need a logo, reach out to me. I can point you in the right directions. You can go to Fiverr, Upwork, or something like that. Hire somebody to do a logo, or if you know someone that does logos, get them done. But a logo is very important. And then when you're doing your logo, make sure it's in a PNG file. You want to make sure you have a PNG file. So that's a transparent background. So you're able to put that on everywhere. Websites, um, stationery, anything that you have without the trans without the whole background. It'll be a transparent. So get a logo made. Another crucial important. It's not much to talk about on the video. You just need to get you a logo made. Okay? Peace. All right, so let's keep moving right along. Let's talk about a domain. Now, what a domain is, is your www dot whatever your business is, dot com or dot agency or dot net or dot org or whatever it is, but you need a, a domain. Now, if you build your website and you bought it from another site or something, most of the time they come with a generic um, a domain. So what you want to do is go to maybe somewhere like GoDaddy or something like that and actually purchase a domain that you're going to be satisfied with. So whatever your business name is, .com or .net or .org or whatever it is, but get you a business domain. And if you build the website and it gave you that generic business domain, you can actually go into GoDaddy, put that generic domain into GoDaddy and have it forwarded to the actual domain that you purchased. So when they type in whatever it is, um, your business name dot wick dot this dot that dot com, it will actually forward over to your business domain, www.mybusiness.com or whatever it is that you have. So you want to get a business domain that's for you. Um, another one I like to use for business domain, and this is also goes back to where I was talking about websites. You can go to the site called drum, drum.com. They're very, very good. Um, it's a very short domain. You can put everything there. And then if you purchase a domain, you can have the drum website. Anytime somebody type in your website, it'll go straight to that drum and you can keep adding to it. It's very simple, very easy. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. That's just a cost efficient way of one, checking off on the website and two, you got your domain. And then when you put those two together, it's very simple and you can just keep adding to it and growing it. That's why I mentioned earlier in the video, all you need is just a website presence. So don't even worry about the website. But the website and the domain does, the website and the domain does go together. So if you not have, if you have not purchased a personal domain, you need to go ahead and purchase that now. Go to GoDaddy. That's a good one. Figure out what your business want to be called. Do a search. Make sure it's not taken. It's going to tell you if it was taken or not. And domains they're very, they're very inexpensive. They can run you from ninety nine uh, ninety nine cent to ninety nine dollars or something like that for the year, or a dollar a year. Um, just get you a domain. Dot coms are good. Dot net. Dot org. But you want it want you want it to be something that somebody can easily easily remember, without them putting too much thought in it. If you're gonna say something like one, www dot one, one sneaker dot com. Is it O N E or the number one? Those type of things. So you gotta think as somebody if it's, as you're telling someone your domain. They can easily, easily remember. And it's going to go into your branding as well because you're going to, every time you post something or do something, you're going to type that domain in so people can go to your site so you can start building a present, a brand recognition, a brand following. So when they see your, lo they see your logo, they hear the domain name, you're out there, you're listed, everything. You're getting more and more credibility. So that's the thing for getting a domain. Get that set up today too. All right, we're back at another one. Let's talk about in this particular video, let's talk about adding our business to Google. Google my business. How essential is that? Think about it. The, anytime you go looking for something or whatever you want to look for, the first place you go to is probably Google, right? One, you look at the, you're looking for it in Google, you look at the reviews, and you just start looking around. 
Google is the top search engine of everything. Facebook is trying to catch up, Bing, Yahoo, and all those others. But Google is the top spot right now. So it's very crucial that you add your business to Google. Google my business. Very key because, just like I said earlier, when people look for you, that's the first place they go. They look for Google. Google can be a very, very good advertising platform, too, because your post gets more reach. So adding your business to Google, you get your business description, your business name, um, phone number, email, website, all that good stuff there. And then you want to add some pictures into Google so it can start indexing the business. Now, in Google, it is I highly recommend that you you stay consistent on Google. Keep your profile updated. Keep posting on Google because it does get visibility, and I mean high visibility. You can post something on Google. It'll go out there, and you don't know what people are searching for. And before you know it, you post a picture on Google. The next thing you know, you got 50 hit looks at it. So people are actually out there in Google and they're searching. And also, when you're applying for business credit or anything, the first thing they do is they go to Google to see if you're listed in Google. Not only Google, but the other um, platforms as well, like Bing and Yahoo and um, Yelp and all those different places there. So if you need help with Google, I'm going to put something in here that will help you, give you a more descriptive description of Google. And also you can reach out to me and I can help you write your Google description and get everything set up. Now, to get started in Google My Business, you do need a Gmail. So if you have a Gmail, just go in there, click on the, the little eight dots there, and on the right side of it, it'll say Google My Business. And you want to go ahead and set up that profile. So very key, very important that you set up a Google My Business. And then by the time you get that, you're well on your way to the next step. So get a Google My Business profile set up today. And I'll see you in the next video. All right, um, here's the next one. Social media. How important is social media? Where the, eye, where the activity at is at, the eyeballs are there. So where is everybody at right now? Everyone is on social media. Between Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, uh, something. 99, 95 to 99% of the world is on social media. For entertainment, for education, for resources, or some sort. They're on the social media. And you need to have a social media presence. I know some of you are going to say, well, I don't do social media. Well, that's okay. You don't have to do social media. But your potential clients and customers and patrons and all of them, they do social media. It's not for you. It's for them. So you need to have a social media set up, presence set up in your business name, not under yours. You is for branding, but your business is to conduct services and get, grab clients and customers, giving them information. When people want to be entertained, they go to TikTok, they go to um, uh, Instagram or something like that. When they want to, when you're working with business-related people, decision makers, real entrepreneurs that's out here doing it, everything, owners and everything, they go to LinkedIn. They want to learn something, they go to YouTube. Um, they just want to look for something for the night to pass their by, pass by because they're bored. They just want to see what's going on. They go to Instagram. And this is your opportunity to capture those audiences. If you want to keep up with the news, they go to Twitter. So social media has taken over and you need to have a presence there. Now, I would definitely recommend that if that's too many for you to start with, pick one, dominate it, and kill it. Pick one. If it's Facebook and you know all your activity, you're a Facebook person and all your friends and family and colleagues and everybody's on Facebook or whatever, then pick Facebook, dominate it, post consistently. And that's very key. You have to be consistent in your social media presence. Now, if you're doing Instagram, okay, fine. Post consist consistently. But put it on your business name because, again, when they're looking for you, they're going to be looking for a social media presence. How are you interacting with the rest of the world? And I type in your business name and no social media presence coming up. That's a red flag. That's an indicator of what you're not doing. And what you're not doing, somebody else is doing. And they're outworking you at some point. So get on social media. Facebook, highly recommend it. Instagram, highly recommend it. And YouTube, highly recommend it. All of them I do recommend. And LinkedIn. The thing about YouTube is 
YouTube is indexed with Google. They index with Google. So when someone goes to Google and they're looking for something, have you ever noticed that there are videos there because they're indexed with YouTube? So if you're doing videos in your um, highly recommended tool, I can't tell you enough how much you should be doing video because it's going to, it strengthens your business between video, regular pictures and everything. It just strengthens your business and it's indexed. Google loves video. You ever look for something like, like I was saying, you ever look for something in Google and you see a video because Google loves video. It puts them to the top. Google, those, and those videos don't expire either. They're always there. So one, you need to get a YouTube account. You need to get a Facebook. You ever do a Google search again and you're looking for something in a Facebook profile comes up, come to this Facebook page. This is how you get customer. This is actually the secret to getting more customer and it's through Google. And social media is linked to Google. So because everybody's going to go to Google first and look for it. One, you're going to have a Google profile like we just talked about. And then that Google profile is going to link to your social media. And then people go to your, before they even decide to do business, they want to check you out. They go to your social media accounts. So if you're listed in Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, all those. And you don't have to do TikTok and the other one, Twitter and all that. You don't have to, but it's recommended that you get some type of presence there. So get a Facebook, a LinkedIn, and a YouTube at the minimum, and an Instagram. At a minimum, get those in your business name, because if you put it under your personal name, they're not going to know who you are unless you're branding yourself that well. And you can do that as well. It can be done. But Facebook, at least, business name. And I did a video, and I'll try to put a link to it. And I can tell you a little bit more about Facebook. And how, how that works. But YouTube is excellent because it indexes with Google. You do a video, it's going to go to Google. So you just did, for one thing you did, you got two presents. And if you do a LinkedIn, it's going to be indexed to Google as well. So social media is very, very important. Remember, just because you don't like social media, your clients and your customers, they do. That's where they're at every, every day. And where the eyeballs are at, that's where the business should be at too. Because those are the ones that's going to pay you. So, see you on the next video. All right, so we're back. So, you made it through the course. You got the foundation for building your business credit. Um, you got everything that you need to get yourself started. In this episode, right here on this video here, I want to give you five starter accounts that you can do. That you can do and get your business credit up really, really fast. See, with the business credit, once you get your done in Bradstreet, the goal is to get an 80 paydex score. And what a PEDEC score is, an 80 PEDEC score is equivalent to having a 700 personal credit score. So if you get an 80 and above, that is considered excellent credit. But just like building personal credit, if you have no, no credit score, you have no credit. So you want to get that built up. And the best way to do it, you need at least five creditors reporting to your Dun & Bradstreet. You get those five, you get an 80. Now you're off and running. You can start applying thing, applying for things, but you have to do it in tiers. Tier one is considered starter accounts. Tier two is a little bit better. And then tier three, you start going for more bigger accounts like um, vehicles, credit cards, things of that nature. But you got to get those starter accounts. And I want to give you five starter accounts that I think works really well to get you off and running. It does take the creditors 30 days to report. So it does take them um, 30 days to report to the uh, credit bureaus, which can be a little time consuming, but we want to go ahead and get those accounts going so you can uh, be off and running. So I want to give you five. And the first one that I recommend, highly recommend is using NAV. And what NAV is, is a business credit monitoring, monitoring service. Now they do charge a, a fee for it each month, but it's highly recommended because just like your personal credit score, you want to know what's going on. And each month, it gives you a status of where you're at. Now, the good thing about NAV, they report to the Business Credit Bureau, which is done in Bradstreet. They're a report there. And um, for each that monthly fee that you're paying, they're going to report that as paid to the Credit Bureau. So that's one business account. The second one I would tell you to go after is Brex. Brex is a business debit card um, feature. So... As you're putting money into your personal banking account, uh, you want to transfer a little bit of money over to Brex and start using that. 
as well. And Brex also reports to the Business Credit Bureau. So it's like a secure debit card. You put money on it, you use it, it reports as the balance that you have on the card and it reports to Dun & Bradstreet as well. That's number two. Um, number three would be Credit Strong. Credit Strong is equivalent to having a loan, a business loan. Although they don't give you the money, you can sign up with them for about a, a few dollars a month and they report your payments on the credit line that you choose. For example, if there's a $5,000 there's a $5,000 offer. So they'll say for $30 a month, we'll report to Dun & Bradstreet that you have a loan with us for $5,000. And they'll report that to the credit bureau as well. That's number 3. You cannot that's three credit that's three creditors reporting to your Dun & Bradstreet. Now you only need two more to start getting that score. The next one I definitely will go with is um Shirtsy, Shirtsy.com. Shirtsy is a marketing platform. So if you have things like apparel where you can have your logo on your marketing material, like your shirts or your mugs or keychains or things of that nature. Now, Shirtsy do have a membership. I think they charge $99 and then they give you a credit line for that and they'll report that payment to the credit bureau as well. And now you're on four. And then the last one I probably would go with would be BP or Arco or something like that. It's a gas card. Now the thing about this gas card, I, I like to I do recommend using the BP solutions and I'm going to put the links to all these here. BP solutions is a gas card. You need gas to move maneuver around. You got to go places, you need gas. So if you can't get approved right away, I will use that as my fourth my fifth one. But if you can try to get approved with it with nothing out of pocket, that's fine. But if you can't, they'll ask you to secure the account with, say, $200. You secure it with $200, they give you $600. And then every time you spend, they report that to the credit bureau. Now, if you want to go beyond that and say, I want to secure it with $500, they're going to give you $15. So basically, it's three times the security deposit that you put down. So if you put down $2, they are going to give you $6. If you put down $5, they are going to give you $15. And um, using that over and over, that reports to the credit bureau. With those five alone, that should give you an 80 pedix, a paydex score. And then I'm going to put a bonus one in here. I think it's, uh, I can't remember the name right now. But if you don't have a, an Experian account, what it will do is give you a BIN number, which is B-I-N, a BIN number, your business identification number. It's the same thing as a Dun & Bradstreet number. So with these accounts that you're establishing, the other credit bureau is going to pick up on it, like um, Business Experian, Credit Safe, and these other ones here as well. So as you're getting those five accounts set up and they're reporting, now your business credit profile is going. And here's a really, really good one, a bonus one. This is a bonus one. And I'm not putting this in the ebook or anything. So in the bonus, this one here is Amazon. Take your debit card, whether it's your business um, credit card or if you get the Brex card. Um, make sure it's the business card with the business name on it. Put that on Amazon and make a few purchases. What Amazon will, know, will do, they will notice that there's a business account credit card that's on file. And then they will also extend credit to you as well. So if you put your business debit card on your Amazon account, they will actually come back and offer you a line of credit. And that credit is pretty significant from almost $7,500 to $10,000. I've seen it even go up to $20,000. With those alone, that should definitely get you to your 80 pedic score. So um, those are just the first five accounts. And as a member, as you're taking this course, I will add more to it. And I will definitely reach out to you and let you know some new ones that are out there. And this is just for only the members that have taken this course. I'll, put, I'll start sending you a link or email to new accounts that I discovered that can help you get more money to your business so you can grow it because money is the lifeline of the business. So um, with those, that's the, that's, is some, that's the first five accounts. And with the bonuses, that's about seven I just listed. And then um, also on the next one, if you look down, there's going to be some bonuses here that I'm going to have here that will help you also build your business more. And if anytime you need any, any information or Anything that you run across that you need more clarification on, you can always reach out to me. You can go to my website at simonmarketing.agency. So just reach out to me. And I definitely, definitely look forward to working with you. And I'm glad you took this course to get your business credit because a lot of people are not doing this. They're using their personal credit, which is taking everything away from them personally. 
and trying to build a business. And before you know it, their personal credit has hurt them because they've done everything under their personal name and their personal credit profile. Their credit scores drop. The good thing about business credit, it does not affect that. Okay? So I want to say thank you. Get your first five accounts. Take advantage of the bonuses. If you need clarification, reach out to me. Also, go make sure you have everything that I listed in the particular order that I listed them on each video, too. So thank you. And um, I'll be in contact with you about new things that I'm offering that can help you build your business. All right? Thanks.